There's a lot of us, unfortunately, get hurt when we're in service. Um, a lot of us end up having to get some help with med- the medical side. Absolutely. Part of going to the VA, part of getting some uh, medical assistance, unlike us being in the service where you just go down to the TMC and then they just take care of, they just bandage you up and give you some Motrin, have you drink some water and you're you're magically good, right? Absolutely. But here, they don't necessarily do that. They, you know, of course you get, you still get treatment and then, and then you head out, but then comes the medical bills. Right. How, does are there any programs are there any ways that there are any veteran type of medical assistance on the back end after treatment absolutely so you know with um if you're already receiving benefits you know and you're over you know 50 percent of disability compensation typically you can be seen typically for anything at the va and you wouldn't have a copay or anything like that except that you cannot be seen for dental now there is medical assistance out there and the great thing is in in, in my view the, the the va has made it very simple um for this benefit it is uh for the medical bills okay typically if, you, if you're not receiving benefits and you go to the va and you qualify to get seen for you know whatever condition you're going through or anything like that excuse me um they have um come out with the uh a waiver of copays okay i believe from a- april 16 of 2020 um to september of this year if you paid any copays to the VA or gave them any money for either a doctor's visit, uh, prescriptions, medical care, anything like that, they should automatically waive it and reimburse you that money. Okay. If they don't, then please contact us and then we'll, you know, we'll help you navigate the VA or get you in in contact with the correct um, person um, that, you know, um, get you, get that taken care of so they can reimburse your money to you. Uh, now, one question that we've actually, so we're broadcasting on multiple different sources. And so sometimes you may or may not see questions come through on whatever source you're watching. But we just got a question in uh, concerning this, uh, concerning medical, uh, the medical side of the house. What if you go to a civilian ER? What if you seek civilian uh, medical treatment? If you go, if you seek some uh, civilian medical treatment, you know, reach out to the VA. Okay, so let them let the staff know. See if you can reach out to the VA and be transferred to a, to a VA medical um, uh, facility, and let the VA know as soon as, as soon as possible. Okay, now I can't say guarantee that that you know that civilian or that bill is going to be taken care of, but in most in most instances, sometimes you know all you all we can do is ask. OK, and, and tell the VA, hey, I didn't have no other type of care. I had to go out in the community. You know, you show them if it, you know if it's a service connected disability that you are already receiving benefits for. And, it, you know, let's say it's life threatening. Um, again, I can't guarantee that the VA will take care of it. But in most instances, you know, you submit that to the VA and hopefully, you know, the VA will take care of that bill for you. But first, inform that medical staff. Can I be transferred over to a VA facility? I'm sorry, a VA facility. Um, or and see what they can what we can do for or what they can do for you. You know, if you do go to to an outside uh, medical care facility as an emergency room, okay. You know, we want you. You know, we want you to get care first. You know, you might be in a situation where you cannot get to the VA. You know, emergency uh, room or anything like that. But you know, the VA should, has things in place and resources in place. But you have to be able to ask, not just leave it to the back end and then try to take care of it once everything is you know is said and done. But you know, we'll be more than happy to assist you try trying to navigate the VA to get that taken care of. No, I think that's. Uh... That's, that's something you, you touched upon something that I do want to emphasize on. A lot of times we defer a lot of uh, medical treatment to the VA. However, however, if you are in life and li- you, if you are in endangerment of life, <laughs> you can't treat anything if you're past. Right. So, right. so, you know, seek care. Like I said, seek care at your nearest, you know, emergency room. Um, now, you know, there's... Um, what, what is it called? The uh, not the emergency rooms, but the urgent cares, um, you know, obviously seek help. You know, we want you to be alive and well. We don't want to, you know, you know, uh, know that, you know, the passing of a veteran happened because they couldn't get to a VA. Absolutely not. 
you know, that, that that's very unacceptable. You know, seek the care, seek medical attention. And but yes, you know, inform. But, you know, it's very important to inform the, the facility that you're going to. Hey, I am a veteran. Is there any way I can be transported to a VA facility? Is there things that, you know, I can take care of on my end? You know, because you we, again, you don't want that financial burden or that big medical bill coming to you. And, and, you know, and then that's another stressor on you to be like, well, you know what? What, what can happen then? And, and I think I think one thing to, to really emphasize on as well is that this isn't just knowledge that the veteran should know. And my wife and I talk all the time about, you know, communication between her and I. I think one of the big things is this type of knowledge, along with where the DD-214 is and some of that stuff that you covered earlier, the important paperwork that you need, mm -hmm. really ought to be common knowledge between... Uh, dependents, spouses, and everyone who were, who's re really re immediately related to that veteran who could either help that veteran or benefit from these items. Right. So, you know, it, it's very important, like I said, to have, have, have all that in, in order. Um, also, you know, I do want to touch upon, you know, have the veteran reach out to a VA facility even before, you know, you get that, hey, I got to go to the ER, get a VA a health ID card. Um, you know, we can tell you, you know, there's three entities to the VA. There's the VHA, okay, the Veterans Health Administration. You know, those are the individuals that provide you health care. OK, then, you know, um, there's a VBA, the Veterans Benefits Administration, which we, we talked about earlier, trying to get benefits like compensation and or pension and things like that, that we help you navigate, you know, through through that system to try to get you the benefits that you, you know, that you earned. OK, and then there's also um, I want to briefly touch about the, the National Cemetery. There's three entities to the VA. OK, um, but in point, you know, it's it's very important to, to get a VA ID health card to be able to, you know, one, identify yourself, your VA health care enrollee, you know, and get that information, you know, let's say on the books. So, you know, you're taken care of. Mm -hmm.